Okay, ready. This is the function we have, and what we have to find, let me just share the screen again, is let f be the function given above. So f of x equals x plus b if x less than one, ax squared if x greater than one, uh, where all values a and b for f uh, uh, is which f is differentiable at x equals one. So this is the situation. So you have to determine which values make this function differentiable. Okay, so I'm going to put here f differentiable at x equals one. So let me just change this one. So this is the problem. We have to determine the values of a and b such that f is differentiable at one. Okay, so what does it mean differentiable? So this is the calculus. f of x differentiable at x equals x zero means that f of x continues at x equals x zero. So this is the first thing you have to remember. If a function is differentiable at a given point, necessarily that function is continuous at that point, correct? So what is the point here? One, okay, at the join. So this point, these two curves join in one. So f of x continues at x equals one means that if you put a one here, a one here and a one here, you get the same value, correct? So a strictly means that the limit when the x approach one from the left of fx is the limit when f, when x approach one from the right. So this is the first condition. The, f the functions has to be the same. They have to get the same limit, okay? Now, if you put a one here, you get one plus B. And if you put a one in the other one, you have A times one squared. So you have one plus B equals A. So I'm going to put here an equation. Um, A equals one plus B. This is my first equation. So if I use the, the fact that this is differentiable, the first is f is continuous, so the functions have to be the same value. So you put a one here, you put a one here, and you get this equation. What does it mean is differentiable? Yeah. Differentiable, f prime of x differentiable, means that if you take the derivative of this and this, and you put the number, you get exactly the same value. So I have to find f prime of x. So what is the derivative of the first one? Okay, derivative of this is one, derivative of this is zero because it's a constant. So you have one when the x is less than one. Now, what is the derivative of this? Two a x squared because a is a constant, so derivative of the x squared is two a. So this is two a x when the x is greater than one. So this is the derivative of the function, correct? Now, f differentiable in one means that f in one here must be one. These two must be equals in x equals one. So if you put a one here, you have one equals, mm -hmm, one equals two times one times x, times a, I mean, two times a times one. So this is two a equals one. So this is the other equation I'm going to put here. 2a equals one. So this is my second equation. Now, what is the value of two to get a one? A equals one half. And if a is one half, I have one half equals one plus b. So b equals, you solve for b, negative one half. So these are the two values that make f differentiable and continuous at the same time. So if we go to our um, paper, so you see here that the solution is the first one. 
this one, right? This okay. is my solution, so A equals one half and B equals negative one half, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these problems are very, very common in the AP test. Well, they were very, very common in the AP test. I don't know now. So hasta today is this Friday, possibly College Board promised to give more information about the AP test. So we have to wait till that day. Mm -hmm. Possibly by Monday, we are going to know. Mm -hmm. All right. Questions, Samurio? Questions, Rene? Pretty much easy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do now another one. Let me just go to the same assignment and share again the screen. And now I'm going to scroll this a little bit. And now we have this one. Okay. The problem with this limit is we don't have yet the derivatives of the inverse trigonometrics. But let me just go and look for something like that. And this one's below. Let me see if I find one. Ellen. Okay. Let's try this one. <clears throat> yeah. This limit without the trick is going to be very difficult. But let me just mm -hmm. try this one. Is the limit when the x approach two of ln of x plus three minus ln of five over x minus two. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the board. Okay, here it is. You see this one? Okay, remember something. The first step is evaluate the limit. So you put here a two and then you check what you get. You get a number, you finish. If not, you just see what you do. Okay, you put ln of two plus three minus ln of five over, um, in this case, it's going to be two minus two. Okay, we don't have to think too much that this is zero over zero, correct? So we cannot find the limit by direct evaluation. Now, we are going to do something very simple. The limit when the x approach a number c, for instance, of f of x over g of x is the same as the limit when you approach c of f prime of x over g prime of x. This is the famous L'Hopital rule, correct? It's very easy to use and give answers if not in the first one, in the second one, because this may be also extended for the second derivative, mm -hmm. right? And usually for as many derivatives as these functions have, correct? Mm -hmm. So if we use this rule, so the limit, the limit when dx approach to of ln x plus three minus ln five over x minus two is going to be the limit of the quotient of the derivative. So the derivative of this is one, so no problem. What is the derivative of the last one? This is a constant, is zero. So this derivative is going to be one over x plus three minus zero, correct? Mm -hmm. Vamos a ponerlo así. 1 minus 0, right? Ok. Now, no problem with these zeros. We put a 2 right here. What do we get? 1 of this, over 1 is this one. So it's 1 over 2 plus 3 is 150. That's my answer. Ok. Now, for the test, this is good enough. If we are going to have a multiple choice, we can use L'Hopital quickly and we can find an answer. Of course, there are some drawbacks using this rule. There are some functions that they are going to give you pretty much undefined in the first, second, third derivative. So it's necessary to do an algebraic trick to apply these ones and get something. But for these easy ones, no problem. So we can check our problem and we see that 
here is my answer, correct? Here is my answer. Okay, it's very easy. Mm. Let's try, for instance, this one. Uh huh. <clears throat> you can solve it using L'Hopital also, okay? But let's see. L'Hopital is very powerful rule. Mm -hmm. Okay, the only one you don't forget is this one. Evaluate the limit, okay? So if you evaluate the limit, you get zero over zero, okay, then you can try L'Hopital ruling case. Mm -hmm. If you get the derivatives of the both expressions, this is what you get, correct? Mm -hmm. And if you put a three, now what you get? Two times three over two times two minus two, six divided by four minus two, two, three, correct? It's very easy, right? El three is negative, no? Oh, mm, ver. negative three, see, it's neg as is negative. It's negative three. Entonces esto es negative 3, negative 3. Entonces esto es negative 6 over negative, and no, esto es negative 6 minus 8, negative 8, correct? Es much, much better, like that. Entonces esto es take it, two times 2, 3 fourths, correct. Yeah, we are right. So with the L'Hopital, um, practically any limit is going to be solved, obviously. The L'Hopital is going to be much better. Let me just go back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In functions that are like exponentials or something like that, correct? Let me see, for instance, for instance, this one. Yeah. This problem. If you use L'Hopital, it's going to be very simple. But here is the problem. Well, there is not going to be problem because time ago you have to memorize this values. What is sine of pi over 3, for instance? Ahora, because we are going to have a multiple choice and you can have a calculator or books, sine of pi over 3 is not going to be a problem, correct? So, but this limit is easy to get. Mm -hmm. I have another limit right here, for instance. This is a clear example that L'Hopital is going to require at least twice or three times the application, correct? Okay, let's see this one. Let me just put it right here. Mm -hmm. So limit when the x approach zero of two x to the six minus six x cubed over five x to the fifth plus three x cubed, correct? Let me just go back to this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is my screen, correct? My ball. Okay. If you have this one, right? Okay. Let's take the limit of the first derivative. Limit when the x approach zero. Well, this is zero over zero. You put zeros here, they get zero. Okay, let me just put. This is zero over zero. So no way to get it. Now, what is the limit when you take the first derivative? Okay, derivative of this, 12x to the fifth minus 18x squared over 20x to the fourth minus 9x squared. This is a still zero over zero, you see? You put a zero, you get zero over zero. Next derivative, okay, let's see, another one. So it's 30x to the fourth minus 36x over 80x uh, cubed 
minus 18x. Again, this married. is zero over zero, correct? Wouldn't it be 12x to the fifth? 12x to the sixth? To the fifth. Oh, oh, yeah, right there. Where? Right here? Because it's 2x to the sixth power, and you do the rule, so it's 12x. 12. That's correct. That's correct. Then this is um, 60. Now, thank you. Okay. The idea is this is still 0 over 0, correct? Uh-huh. And if you continue, you are going to get another expression, and that's going to be your answer. So you get the limit, again, of the derivative. So six times, 60 times 40, 240x cubed minus 36 over... 240x squared minus 18. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be what? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. This is going to be, uh, if you put this zero, this disappears. So it's negative 36 over 18 is positive. And then you simplify, you get, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 6 for 6, 36 is true, correct? Is that my answer is correct? Mm -hmm. everything. Okay, you see this is very long, correct? It's working, but it's very long. If you take the algebra in this case, this is the limit when the x approach zero, and then we can factor x cubed from this one to x to the cube minus six over x cubed, and then you have four x squared plus three, correct? Déjenme ver. ¿Por qué puse un minus? This is plus, right? This is plus. This is plus and this is plus. So this is negative two. This is negative positive. Okay. Now, what happened with the cubes? You cancel the cubes. And then you get the limit of this expression. So you put a zero, you get negative six over three. So it's the same one. So you see, L'Hopital may work always, right? But sometimes the algebra is possibly faster, correct? Yep, you see? Okay, so you have to decide. This was long. This was short. Correct? This got the same answer. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you decide. With experience and the practice, you are going to find what is the fast approach. Correct? Remember, this is a time test. You are going to have 45 minutes only. How many questions? I don't know yet. They cannot be that many. Pretty much you are going to have like 28 or something like that, or 24, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more problem. Let me see. Uh, another limit easy to compute. However, this one. What is that limit equals to? Okay, let me just stop the screen. This is the limit, correct? Mm -hmm. Bueno, remember, we have to put the zero first. So this is e squared, because if you put a zero, two plus zero, two, minus e squared over zero. Yeah, this is zero over zero, correct? Mm -hmm. So we can use L'Hopital. So this is going to be equals the limit when the h approach zero. The derivative of this is zero because e squared is a constant. The derivative of this is one. We are going to take the derivative with respect h. So this is e to the two plus h Thank over you. one. The remember, the derivative of the exponential is always the same. It's the exponential. If the derivative of two plus h is one. So you put a zero, what you get? This is a squared, correct? The e squared, I mean. It's kind of simple, right? Yeah. Mm. 
let me see. Um, this one is possibly a little bit more complex, but let me just go back to another one. So this is the last page. Okay, let me just go back to the first pages. Mm -hmm. However, in this case, for instance, do you think you can use L'Hopital? Hmm? Yeah, but... Yeah. How many times do you think you can use L'Hopital? This is a cube, this is a cube. So, it's going to be long, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, what is the trick I want you to learn? It's very simple, right? Let me just write the expression. Limit at infinity of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 over 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the board. This is the board, correct? Now, when you have to put infinity, it's a limit at infinity, right? This is going to be a very big number. So check the powers you have and think, if you have four, this is your initial number, four, at the top one. If you take a million, suppose X is a million, is, X is growing, but suppose you have a million, then you multiply three times a million, well, three times a million is three millions, compared with four, you subtract four from three millions, well, for practical purposes, you have three millions. Now, suppose you multiply times two and you square a million. Well, this number is much greater than this and a lot more than this one. Now, suppose you cube a million, because this number is much more than this and is much more than this and this. So the leading terms when the numbers are big are the ones that determine the behavior of the polynomial. So really, this is the same as if you take the limit at infinity of x cubed over 4x cubed. Because the leading terms are the ones that are going to give me the behavior when the number is very big. Now, what you can do with the cubes? Because you can cancel. These cubes can be canceled because they are the same. So this is going to be the limit at infinity of one fourth. And what is the limit of a constant? It's the same constant, correct? So my limit is one fourth. Mm -hmm. So this is a fast way to know limits at infinity, okay? So you just figure out, I'm going to take here, uh, no say something, and I cover the terms, these terms, correct? I cover this term, I use something different. For instance, this paper. I cover these terms, yes, and I see, okay, who are the leading terms? Okay, they are the same, this is the same as one fourth. So the limit is going to be one fourth. Because these at the front are going to tell the polynomial, the behavior at the big numbers. So just discard these ones and then you see, okay, this is one fourth. So my limit is going to be one fourth. 99.9% .9 of the times this work, okay? This works. So you can trust that pretty much all the, most of the cases you are going to be right. Okay, vamos a suponer otro. Let's do another one. Just mentally, you're going to tell me the behavior. Limit at infinity of um, 4x squared minus 3x minus 1 over x cubed minus x plus 1. Okay, what is that limit at infinity? Mm. This is okay. Who are the leading terms? This is the big term in the top. This is the big term at the bottom. So this is like the limit at infinity of 4x squared over x cubed. Now, what you can cancel out? The x squares, correct? So this is like the limit of 4 over x, limit at infinity. Now, what is the behavior of this limit? You must remember that this is the reciprocal function. 
So the reciprocal function always behave like this. So the limit at infinity when the x is very big, the function really goes to zero. So this is going to be zero, correct? So you divide four by a big number, that number is smaller, 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 as you increase this one. So what is going to be the biggest number, infinity? If you divide four by infinity, this is zero. Let me just write it in the forbidden way. Four over infinity, that's a zero, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pretty much all the cases work. Let me just do another one. Mm -hmm. So you have limit at infinity of x to the fifth minus x plus four over 4x to the 4 minus x cubed minus x squared minus 1. Okay. Now, again, I have to know what happened for very big numbers. So, again, the fifth power, the x is more than the x and the 4, and here the fourth power is more than this one. So, this limit is going to be like <clears throat> the limit of uh, x to the fifth over 4x to the 4, okay? Excuse me, Tantito. <coughs> so, what you can cancel out here, okay? You can cancel out x to the 4 and x to the 4 here. So, this is like the limit at infinity of x over 4, <coughs> right? And remember, what is this? This is aligned with the slope one fourth. Okay, what is going to be the behavior as the x increases? Well, it's going to increase forever, so this is going to be infinity. Correct? Mm -hmm. So, the limits at infinity are not that difficult, are really simple if you think pretty much in practical way. Okay? Pretty much? Mm -hmm. Okay, questions at this point? Okay, my recommendation, please. Um, go to the element I put in my Google Classroom. Let me just put the Google Classroom here. Let's get this one. Um, okay, right here. Yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let me just share the screen. Okay, share screen. Um, <clears throat> where is it? I try here. Okay, go to the Google Classroom and check these problems right here. Okay, this is calculus A B. Let me just go back to my classroom. Classes, calculus A B test right here. Go to the guide. The guide has many limits and continuity and many problems. But you have the answer, so you can try to practice by your own some of the problems. So you can download this PDF and check the problems. Obviously, these are the ones we are going to be doing here in the, so. yeah. here in the sessions. Um, yeah. Both for the classroom. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, right? <clears throat> okay. So, any question? Now, remember, we need to do to turn in the homework. That's why I was in my other page. Uh -huh. For the grade, if you take right here, no, this one, classes, uh, AP Calculus AB, right? This is the homework, okay? So couldn't preview, okay, well, no problem, right? So this is the homework. So try to uh, complete this one and take pictures and upload to your Google Drive and share to this one. M Ramirez to GP Apps Galina Park ISD com. This is the address okay. you have to share, okay? M Ramirez okay. to for the one now. For you, René, déjame abrir el documento. Let me open the document. Mm 